Hi, everybody. I'm Ashley Eason, a Democratic candidate for the Indiana State Senate in District 36. My district starts in downtown Indianapolis and heads south into Perry Township and also covers a bit of Johnson County and Greenwood. I am proud to be a first time candidate and I look forward to bringing women's voices to leadership and government. Tonight, I'm so happy to continue our Women in Politics series to shine a light on other women in politics here in Indiana. I know that these women will offer insights and advice and encouragement to women seeking leadership positions in politics and in public service. While women in leadership positions in government are continuing to increase, in 2020, only 27% of elected offices are held by women. In the Indiana State Legislature, it's only 24% and we would like to change that together. So tonight I am delighted to be joined by Poonam Gill. Uh, a few things about Poonam include that she is a former candidate for the Indiana House of Representatives in District 88 uh, from the 2018 election. She narrowed a 30 point gap to 10 points in a historically red district. Uh, Poonam is also an engineer and in STEM education advocate who is focused on closing the gender gap in STEM. So there's a gender gap problem in STEM as well as politics. Uh, and I'm Poonam, I'm so delighted to visit with you tonight. Thank you so much for having me, Ashley. It's a pleasure and I'm super excited to share a little bit more about my background and story. Great, thanks. Well, so we'll just kick it right off. In 2018, you ran you know, you aimed low. You ran against the Speaker of the House, Brian Bosma. It's a big deal. Uh, it was a really close race. Tell me more about your history, what led you to politics, and then what on earth uh, caused you to decide to run against the Speaker of the House? Well, I'll start by saying I, before I decided to run, I had no political background or political experience. I was someone that cared about my community. I was involved. I had kids that were in the public school district. Um, and I really wanna underline that for so many women, they, they don't think that they're qualified to run for office because they don't, maybe their resume doesn't check the boxes or they don't have a law degree. And that's just not true. If you care about your community and you're willing to put in the work, you are qualified to run for office. <laughs> So I, I really want to emphasize that. Um, you know, I am a daughter of immigrants. My parents came to this country to give me and my siblings a better life, and they did. And I'm really grateful for that. And I really grew up with a sense of responsibility that if I don't like what I'm seeing in my community, that I have the power to change it. And when I started to get a little bit more involved at a local level by just hearing from our elected officials and just getting more involved in the community, I really saw a lack of representation, diverse representation. Uh, I did not see a lot of women in office, definitely not a lot of scientists and engineers making <laughs> data-driven decisions. Um, I did not see women of color, and I didn't see a lot of moms with young children like me. And I really believe that if we want a more representative government, then we, the people, have to step up and get involved. And, you know, for me specifically, I decided to run against my state representative who had been there for 32 years, which I thought was far too long. I think it's important that we hold our leaders accountable, especially when they become complacent. And one way to do that is to run against them. Uh, I love uh, your courage in doing that, and it's inspiring to candidates today like me. So thank you so much, Poonam. Um, can you share with me a woman who has significantly impacted your life and your political career? So my mentor when I ran for office was Christina Hale, and I call her a friend now. And everyone knows Christina. She was a former state representative, a Democratic lieutenant governor, um, and a candidate in 2016. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently running for Congress in the 5th District. And I was so fortunate to be paired up with her. Um, she was my mentor. And when I made that decision to take on the Speaker of the House, she was the first person I told and really kind of asked what she thought and if she thought I was crazy. And she told me that I should absolutely go for it. And I really want to contrast that with when I told uh, men in the party that I was going to take on the Speaker. Um, instead, I was told that, you know, maybe I should, you know, aim a little lower. Maybe I should, you know, run for school board because I was a mom. 
Um, you know, these are implicit and explicit biases that women face when they decide to make a big decision like running for office. And uh, even, you know, especially for women of color, we face additional barriers, you know, with a name like Poonam, I was told by some people in the party that, you know, maybe I should consider changing my name. And, um, you know, these are barriers and biases that we face. And when we make a decision to run for office, I think it's really important as women that we have female mentors and role models that we talk with first. Um, and, and most importantly, that we don't shrink ourselves to make others feel comfortable, that we step into our power and really own it. What you're saying is resonating with me big time. It is the women that have stepped up around me and specifically take me seriously. And hearing you speak uh, must have been a year and a half ago at a Women for Change event about running for office where I was still like, oh yeah, maybe in 10 years. Um, what I so appreciated about what you and many of the other women at that event talked about is that we all take each other seriously. This is serious. This is realistic. This is important and a good use of time. So thanks for sharing all that. Um, you have engaged in a lot of meaningful community work uh, focused on closing the gender gap in STEM education. Can you please share with us, share with us the work that you do to empower other young women in STEM? Absolutely. This is such a passion of mine. Uh, you shared a, a statistic earlier about women in politics. Women make up half of the U.S. workforce, but only 28% of the STEM workforce. So those numbers are very similar. And um, while girls are much more or just as engaged in STEM subjects as boys in elementary school, research has shown that we start to lose girls in middle school and high school. So that's really where my focus is, is how do we increase engagement for girls through designing through, through the designing of STEM instruction. Um, I, I worked for a global nonprofit that was focused on closing the gender gap in tech where we mm -hmm. gave free resources to rural and urban areas and girls in those areas. And um, currently one of the founding board members for the first all girls STEM school in Indiana, it's really in the early planning phases, um, but it's something I'm very excited and passionate about. And um, really a, a lifelong goal of mine is to build a pipeline of future female engineers in the US. I love that. I really love that idea because I, I know jobs in STEM, one, women can perform just as well as men, uh, but also those jobs are high performing, high paying, good paying jobs that we need more of in our community. And we need women to be at the front lines just as much. That's fantastic. Well, I'm curious. Uh, so you ran for office in 2018. Uh, is there one big takeaway that you had from your experience in politics and working with a new industry for you uh, at that time and working from people with a lot of different perspectives? Absolutely. And I'm sure that you can, um, you know, probably agree to this, but for those of us who are, who are not from the political industry and in the industries that we work in, we are required to work with people from all backgrounds from, you know, it doesn't matter what their political party is or where they come from we are expected to work together and, and come up with solutions. And we should really expect the same from our representatives. Um, and, and I think that by electing people that come from a variety of, of occupational backgrounds, uh, that you know maybe bipartisanship will actually happen. I think bipartisanship is a good thing. We have to be able to work together and, and find solutions together. That's great. I look forward to that too. And yes, coming from outside of politics uh, presents some really unique opportunities. Um, I don't come in with all the same assumptions as those that have been raised up in the party. And we really do need both perspectives at the table to be successful. Could you share with us a big success that you've had in your career that you're very proud of? So I really believe that you are never too old to set new goals or dream new dreams. I am currently getting my master's degree at Purdue. I never thought I would do that so much later on in my career, um, but um, that's something that I'm proud of. Um, giving thousands of girls at, across Indiana access to free coding resources um, is another thing that I'm proud of. And I'm also proud to be part of the very first all girls STEM school in Indiana. And I'm hoping to really share that as a, as a success story years from now. That's wonderful. 
Well, is there anything that you'd like to share about the best way for the women out there in the 36th district and across Indiana uh, to support you in the work that you're doing? So first, if you, if you are a woman that works in STEM, please reach out to me if you are interested in engaging more girls and, you know, possibly being a mentor or role model to them. Um, you know, I read an article recently about how women should have a personal board of directors. And I thought this was really interesting. Um, so a personal board of directors is like your a personal board of mentors because women are so layered and we wear different hats. So, you know, Ashley, you've got a full-time job, you're running for office, you've got all these things going on. Um, you know, I, I'm a mom of three kids. I, I'm a graduate student, I'm an engineer, I'm a STEM advocate. Um, and I think having a mentor in sort of each of those lanes would be, would be good. Um, you know, mentors that push you out of your comfort zone um, so that you can experience growth and take risks and it's really an opportunity for learning. Um, so really, you know, encourage women supporting other women. And I know, Ashley, that when you are elected that you will probably be a mentor to, you know, some other young woman out there who's thinking about running for office someday. So um, I know that when I ran for office, it was absolutely out of my comfort zone. And when you do that every day, when you step outside of your comfort zone every day for a year, you are absolutely going to come out the other side of a very much evolved person. Um, and that, oppor or that opportunity for me really opened more doors for me. So I really want women to realize the power of our flames and step into that power. Wow. I love this. And I greatly look forward to uh, November 4th, first of all, because we're 40 days out from an election. Uh, but mostly because when I win, I look forward to the chance to recruit other women and people of color that are just professionals that may or may not come from a political background. And I want more of their voices at the table as candidates and then in the future as elected officials. Uh, because as you said, I love what you said earlier, because we come from just the business space or from the nonprofit space, I'm so accustomed to working with people with lots of different backgrounds. And I don't, <laughs> I don't ask them their politics to get a deal done. Uh, right. or to sell intercultural communication training to them. Uh, I just but want to better understand their needs. And so I think um, our whole state and our community would really benefit from the voices uh, that you and I have had a chance to get to know in our daily work. And I, I look forward to recruiting some more candidates uh, that can be great public servants uh, and run really fun campaigns. So I, I appreciate you saying all that. Well, that's it for my questions. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with our audience uh, of Women in Politics tonight? I just want to wish you all the best. And what you were saying, 40 days left, it's right around the corner. It's so close. <laughs> it's so close. Well, thank you, Poonam Gill. I so appreciate the work you do. You are a trailblazer in politics here in Indiana by running for office and, and taking big chances and risks, but bringing really amazing results too. And um, me and many other candidates uh, appreciate how you came before us just two years ago uh, and set the stage for us to be successful now. Um, and for everyone else out there, thank you so much for joining us for another Women in Politics tonight. Uh, these will continue all the way up until the election. Every Thursday night, we have some wonderful women joining us and I hope you'll join us next time and hope you have a lovely evening. Thanks, everybody.